came to understand that comparing animal slaughter to the Nazi death camps was one step too far. It's the exact same thing. Try to force. Force? You pay people to force knives in animals' throats. That's what you do. The thing is, you laugh in your van, I can talk to you, you can't respond to what I'm saying to get angry. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. Just like us! Just like us! Don't invade a restaurant. It's simply not fair. Oh, do you want to talk about fairness and justice? It's not fair that we subjugate the most innocent beings on earth. That's not fair. Why are we doing it to them for? Welcome to another video. Now, I thought I would take this time to address something that I've been getting heaps of. I've got a lot of this since I started my advocacy. All these people out there saying to me, Joey, you're too aggressive. Now, the question has been raised because of my fiery debate. It was a very heated debate with a guy called Nick Ferrari. Don't know too much about him. Apparently, he's a bit of a big deal on the radio over there in the UK. They asked me for an interview regarding Direct Action Everywhere. Direct Action Everywhere, they do some controversial stuff, I know. We'll get into that whether I think it's effective or not. Last day of the tour. Last day of the tour. Big tour. One of the biggest, most busiest of my life. Very tired. I was questioning myself, I was like, ooh, should I take on this interview? I'm a bit tired, a bit wound up. I've been out the front of slaughterhouses for three weeks, okay? I bore witness on my birthday inside on the kill floor of a pig slaughterhouse in Vienna. Footage is coming soon, very powerful. I was like, oh, am I really in the right mental state to do this radio debate? And you know what? I thought, take every opportunity because you never know how this is going to turn out. My conduct in the interview, I mean, there's many reasons for my conduct in that interview. Uh, he was mocking, uh, mocking me. He was making me answer the questions that he had already set out, trying to lead me into traps with his questions, yes or no answers. I knew where he was going. Now, in terms of whether or not I think DXC actions are effective, it gets me on the radio to discuss mm -hmm. veganism, doesn't it? Now, in terms of whether you think my approach, my aggressive conduct in this, aggressive conduct in this interview, I think it was passion. I think it was passion, but I look, do you think it, do I think it was as effective as some of my interviews, some of my TV um, appearances? Probably not, okay, probably not. I'll agree with you there. But was it not effective at all? I don't know about that. And how the hell do you know about that? Now I speak very directly, um, very directly, and I'm gonna read you an email that I got. Just then, I just received that, inspired me to make this video. Hi Joey, I gave up being vegetarian at the age of 24. 10 years after I've decided to give up meat. The last two years of that decade, I was vegan. However, I went traveling and found it impossible to find vegan food in some countries. I gave it up and since then I've had nothing but health issues since she gave up veganism. I've been toying with the idea of veganism, toying with the idea of veganism for a while now. I wanted to let you know, I'm sure you get this a lot, that your conversation with Nick Ferrari on LBC Radio convinced me it was the right thing to do. So she went vegan, she stopped. The, the radio interview with Nick Ferrari convinced her. Now, not because I, I hadn't heard these arguments before. I'd seen the films, read the statistics, knew the facts. It doesn't seem to penetrate a meat-eating brain. Eventually, you forget the harrowing and revolting images of the sentient beings in agony. It's human nature to justify one's actions. However, Listening to Nick Ferrari say, they're just pigs, in response to your passionate argument, made me feel actually disgusted. Gives me pleasure to abuse the innocent. Pleasure to abuse. They are being abused. It's what did pig. they ever do to you? It's a pig. It's a pig? I was disgusted to my core. They aren't just pigs. I know that. It gave me something to consider badly. I will try the, my hardest to make this work this time around. I can't stand the idea that I'm complicit in the murder of sweet animals. Wow. One more person has changed their mind. I got probably over 150 comments saying, Joey, you're too aggressive. Joey, you're too aggressive. Maybe I was. I was so passionate at this stage. You have no idea what I went through that three weeks. People saying, you know, you, you wasted an opportunity. I've wasted an opportunity on this uh, radio show. Now, I get 
emails all the time from TV shows, radio shows. After this radio show, the day after, a very big TV uh, program in the UK wanted me to come on. They're like, when are you coming back to the UK? We want you on for another debate. They want me on for debates, okay? Because I give them fiery, um, passion-filled debates that are big talking points. LBC radio uh, listeners loved this. They loved it. I'll show you the screenshot. They loved this uh, debate. People saying, oh, you miss opportunities, Joey. I've had over 20, I don't even know, over 20 big radio and TV debates last year alone. So you're playing word games. Let's talk no, about the app. Piers, leave them alone. Let him go, let him go. <laughs> I want to see. Yeah, you'd be angry too if there were dogs in the back well, of that truck. Well, I'm going to tell you how many people just listened to that interview. Seven and a half million. I guarantee you, next year, I'll have the same amount of opportunities. I create these opportunities. Now, in, t in terms of my conduct, sometimes, you know, yeah, I agree. Could have been a little bit more, you know, chill. But what we're talking about here is animals being murdered. So sometimes it's an emotive issue. In terms of it being not effective, never effective, look, I'll give you the best example of an activist you would deem if my conduct in there was aggressive, you would deem this activist aggressive too. Gary Urofsky. Gary Urofsky. Now, this individual is responsible for more conversions than nearly anyone else on earth. A, a conservative estimate would be from between 100,000 to a million. The best speech you'll ever hear, where he's talking about the animal holocaust, the rape of dairy cows. He uses all these words. He went to Israel the victims of the actual holocaust and preached the animal holocaust. Don't you think that you may owe an apology for this comparison to the Israeli people? Absolutely not. The only apology that needs to take place is all human beings who treat animals like nothing. It is very controversial. He's on TV, very, very passionate. No holds barred with Gary Orofsky. Israel is one of the most vegan countries on earth. Gary Orofsky actually assaulted a reporter over there. You're talking to us after coming back from police. Tell us what happened exactly. What happened was I got into a confrontation with some news reporter. Pulled off his mic, stormed off of a TV interview when he, you know, someone used the argument Hitler was vegetarian. What the f is wrong with everybody? Animals are being f killed and I'm being f raped over the goddamn coals! Okay, now his conduct over there, you would deem like maybe a little bit aggressive. Yeah, 100% it was. Did that hold the vegan movement back in Israel? Did it hold it back? No, it didn't hold it back. The message cuts through and it means more than your conduct. If your message is true and it's strong, let me give you an example. Um, if we're debating child abuse, I'm defending children, okay? There's someone there that who's, is saying, you know, child abuse is justified because it gives me pleasure. And I'm going, that is absolutely ridiculous. My daughter was uh, abused by a child abuser and I start getting aggressive. Maybe I throw in even an insult, which I never did in that interview. I don't throw insults. Uh, Nick Ferrari actually insulted me. He started to mock my um, voice. Protests such as this actually set your cause backwards. How do you know? Where's your data? Where's your data? I don't hey, have any excuse, excuse data. Me. Are people going to go, oh, you know, his message is wrong because his conduct was aggressive? No. No, not people with that are switched on. I'll give you an example of DXC actions not holding back the vegan movement. Because people are saying, you know, these DXC actions, even though I don't participate in them, sometimes I'm like, oh, that's a bit cringy myself, and I'm a vegan activist, and that's me just being honest, okay? Me just being honest. Okay, let me give you an example of some of the most quote unquote extreme, I don't think activism is extreme compared to what happens to animals, but quote unquote extreme direct action on earth happens in Israel, the most vegan country on earth. Wow, Tal Gibola, okay, you, you could consider her an aggressive activist as well. Yeah. One Big Brother, she won the Big Brother show over there, very famous vegan activist over there, okay. A, more aggressive conduct than me usually. Definitely, that's a very solid statement. Think of the actions that they were doing over there, ALF Israel. They were getting like baby baby bobby calves that had died on a dairy farm. They were taking them out into the streets and doing like street theatre where they would slaughter the, the bobby calf in public. They do very intense forms of direct action constantly over there. Now, there's also other activists working in the background. We've got Vegan Friendly doing their friendly um, uh, outreach-style activism. 
But all I'm trying to say is that the most aggressive, the most extreme forms of direct action you could possibly find are in Israel and Gary Yarovsky's two tours over there and his conduct where he assaulted a reporter, stormed out, preached the animal holocaust in the land of the holocaust. Okay? And you were telling me that it held the vegan movement back over there? No, it didn't. There's more vegans in Israel per capita than anywhere else on earth. So don't tell me that my conduct in that interview is going to hold the vegan movement back. Nothing is going to hold the vegan movement back. Nothing is going to hold the vegan movement back. We have a very strong reality that we can show to people. You are paying for animals to be stabbed to death in a slaughterhouse and you claim to be against animal cruelty. Very strong reality, very strong truth we have there. We have a lot of people who don't do activism themselves, but they know all the answers. My form of activism would be better. You've got to conduct yourself like this, Joey. Don't ever get passionate and, you know, you know don't ever... <sighs> God. We all have all the answers, don't we? I think you should spend less time criticizing the work of other activists, more time creating your own platform where you can spread this message in your own way. Now, I do my peaceful Socratic method most of the time. Sometimes, people like this antagonistic speciesist can work me up, especially when I've been out the front of slaughterhouses for the last three weeks. You haven't seen what I've been doing the last three weeks. You don't know. Yeah, I know that I'm, I'm in the forefront of the vegan movement. I have to be careful of my conduct. But you know what? Sometimes, things just happen. Things just happen. I get passionate. I get passionate. This means more to me than anything else in my life. I'll give my life for this cause. I, I guarantee you that my conduct in that interview did nothing to hold back the vegan movement. I guarantee you that those direct action everywhere um, actions are not holding back the vegan movement. There's many different types of vegan activists, health, uh, uh, environment activists, very peaceful advocates um, that are all working together. Yeah, it makes people cringe and it creates a little bit of a, you know, negative press. But as a result of that negative press comes discussion about animal rights. It's, it creates discussion. It brings veganism into the headlines. Now, you do not know, you do not have the data, or the data, <laughs> however you want to say it, that says these actions hold back the vegan movement. I've got evidence in Israel. More extreme direct action than anywhere else on earth. Okay, and it didn't hold and it doesn't hold the vegan movement back there. Uh, interviews like this are a learning curve for me, for sure. I've done plenty of them. I've done plenty of them. Yeah, sometimes I let my emotion get the better of me, but for the most part, I keep cool, rational, calm, and I'm passionate. People feel that passion. Always speak the truth with conviction for the animals. Never, ever withhold the truth of what's happening to them. Speak for them like you would want to be spoken for if it were you in their position. That is the advice of one of my mentors, Gary Yarovsky, and I'll always stick to that, okay? Doesn't matter how you act compared to the truth of your message, okay? The truth of the message cuts through and overrides and outweighs your conduct. Although, having a better conduct and a rational, calm uh, response type conversation with someone is a lot better. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that. I'm going to agree with that. But to say that my conduct in that interview is, oh, it's a missed opportunity. No, it's not. No, it's not. I took that opportunity instead of sitting at home and going, mm, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. I'm a bit tired. Maybe I should just sit this one out. No. Nah. No, I'm not sitting out opportunities like that. And I had a really good opportunity there to show how insensitive this individual is by saying they're just pigs. They're just pigs. And as a result of that interview, someone's emailed me and said, you know what, I really realise that I should be vegan. That's what I've got to say about that. I mean, everyone's got all the, the best advice, but, you know, put it into action. Show us. Show us. Put it into action. I, I give my life for this movement every single day. You should be doing the same. If you've got a better way, do it. Do it. Show me how it's done. I want you to get online. I want you to do it. I want you to put yourself in the most uncomfortable situations where you're getting criticized constantly by the vegan movement, by meat eaters, by getting threats, constantly getting teased, mocked. Put yourself in those positions every single day for the animals, okay? And then tell me how much better your activism and how much more effective your activism has been for the movement, okay? Until then, have a little bit of perspective. Think about it from both angles here, all right? And, and you don't have all the answers when it comes to what's the most effective. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Got a bit passionate there because it, it, it is true. It's a passionate topic and, you know, I just wanted to show you some examples of where this extreme type activism hasn't held back the movement. Don't worry about that. Just keep doing your own. 
Keep doing your peaceful advocacy if that's your style. If you want to do something that resonates with your authenticity, okay, do that as well. All right. Thanks to all the activists who do their activism in many different ways. We need all different ways working together for the movement, direct action. We need uh, the peaceful advocates. We need the uh, plant-based um, health uh, arena too. Never forget the animals. Veganism is a moral principle. But all of us working together can help propel this movement forward. Less, you know, less of the negative stuff, you know. Yeah, we have to uphold each other to a higher standard. But you know what? We're all just trying our best. We're all trying our best. Keep trying, keep fighting, and together we can make this happen. After talking to 60,000 people, I've realized and learned that people are ready to listen to the message or they're not, no matter how you act. I can be as sweet as Gandhi or as radical as early Malcolm X, and it will not change one person's mind about the issue of veganism and animal rights. You support the very thing we're against, so how could you be in favor of our cause? Be, be, uh, no, of course I want you to have your cause. I don't agree with it. You, you're eating suffered animals.